Schaefer for the city of Monterey. So when um, Hans said, or Nat said, that they wanted to have these meetings here, I said that's absolutely perfect because library is a source for information and um, Hans is full of information and uh, we all have questions and so it's a perfect fit and I really like the idea of getting people in here before the library opens so you can kind of have that experience and um, I'll just make a quick pitch for our library. We are California's very first public library. We were established in 1849 before anybody else had one, a public library, and um, we continue to be a welcoming place for all. And I see a couple of people from our friends group, and the exciting news from our friends is they've just recently formed a foundation because we know, looking forward, that we're gonna have some budget challenges, and so the more we can do with uh, partnering private and public funding, the better. So let me turn things over to Hans. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, have a seat, mm -hmm. everyone. Um, and have a donut and have a cup of coffee. So so thank you so much. Uh, my name is Hans Hussler. I'm, I'm the city manager for the city of Monterey. I also would like to welcome some of our staff members that, that found the time to attend. Um, Eric Palmer doesn't need an introduction. He, he works in the city manager's office and is a well-known uh, videographer and uh, artist in his own right and uh, helps us to uh, live stream this meeting on Facebook right now. So we, we are right now, I think 2.8 billion people are, are watching <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, meeting on Facebook. And so you need to be aware that this meeting is actually uh, also documented through the Facebook Live feature as well as on Sound Blog. So people can listen to it later when they drive home and commute back uh, from here to Monte Vista. You might want to listen three minutes to, to the 60 minute meeting. Um, but everything is getting recorded, so please be aware of that. Um, we also have uh, Lauren Lai here, our finance director. Uh, many of you have seen her in action in front of council. She has attended <coughs> numerous uh, uh, neighborhood meetings uh, and other business association meetings, so Lauren's very, very well known. Ned uh, Roja Natsasithira is our uh, assistant city manager, and uh, he helps us to set it all up, and uh, is basically uh, uh, working with me day to day to help implement the policies of the city and be responsive to our neighbor, neighbor's requests. And then last but not least, uh, the person that you never want to see at your home, uh, the fire chief, uh, is here as well. As you know, uh, our fire department services uh, five different agencies, uh, Pacific Grove, Carmel, uh, uh, San City, uh, Mar Navy School, as well as uh, uh, the city of Monterey and the airport and, and last but not least most importantly the city of Monterey and, uh, we didn't have so many chiefs how many chiefs do you have in your succession there total chief officers yeah, total chiefs yeah fire chiefs oh fire chief number 12 number 12 so that's that's shows you they are usually pretty long in in, in charge of fire engines and then fire prevention and fire protection um, many of you know me, what you don't know, what I assume you don't know is um, I grew up uh, on a very small island in, uh, in Germany and uh, northern Germany and it was just Germany because the Germans were the last one to take that island. Uh, it was at one time Danish, it was Swedish, you know, it's one of those areas in Europe that you know, we hang colors up, you know, whoever wants to rule us, but we have a very proud, <laughs> independent soul. And uh, so that's, that's the island I grew up, and the island um, it was basically a, a cosmopolitan of Monterey. Uh, when I grew up, uh, in summertime after Easter, my mom kicked us out of our rooms, and we went, moved into the basement, and we rented out bed and breakfast because the summer tourists were coming from all over German, Germany and onto the island. And when I was 11 or 12, started working as a ball kid in the tennis uh, club just across the street. Then I became a, 
dishwasher, and then I worked in a grocery store. So we were heavily loaded in tourism, and when it was October, we shut down the bed and breakfast operation. We yelled in the house, hooray, no more tourists. <laughs> and for six months, the house was ours again. And uh, the other part that you need to know about that island is, we had three military bases on that island. It was heavily, heavily armored because somebody might steal that island from Germany. So we had on there uh, a little uh, Navy base, and an Air Force base. Interesting, what is of concern? What are we missing? Where did we screw up? So, if you're okay, I sit down. Uh, Eric, did, did we catch that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, all of you uh, know each other. I don't know if, if we can go quickly around and, and quickly just <coughs> say the name and where you're from, if that's okay with you, <coughs> starting with you, Gina, if that's okay. Gina Jett. Um, where am I from? Okay. Which neighborhood or? Oh, uh, Monte Vista. Thank you, Gina. The other Hans, uh, also Monterey Vista. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the other Hans. Yeah. <laughs> Cherie Miller from Pearl Street downtown. Thank you. Bud Miller. Yes. Pearl Street. Lauren, finance director. <laughs> Maddie from New Monterey. Larry Himbaro from New Monterey. Mike Sovereign from Monte Vista. Bill Wachowski, Monte Vista. Daryl Sink uh, from Monte Vista. Yes. Jane Sink, Monte Vista. Nat Rojasta, the assistant city manager. Anne <coughs> Jacobson, Skyline Forest. Great. Terry Latasso, yes. um, yes. Old Town, Monterey. I'm the chairman of the planning commission. Yes. Jennifer Coker, Monterey County Convention Business Bureau at Native Community Great job. Got this panel for a little across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Petty, I live in Old Town. Francesca, I'm in Old Town as well. Uh, Gary Curcio, I am with Monterey County Hospitality Association, but our son and daughter-in-law just recently purchased a home on Via Gayuba, and uh, I'm here subbing for them because they're busy working. <laughs> I'm Zoe Carter, I live in Monsalas, and I'm the chair of the Architecture Review Committee. And <clears throat> you met me initially, I'm Inga Waite, and when I'm not living here, I live at Del Monte Beach. And Eric, Eric Palmer. Monterey Vista. <clears throat> So thank, thank you so much uh, for, for the brief introduction because when you go around, sometimes that gets out of hand and people <laughs> talk more. Um, but, but I wanted to make sure that we know all each other and I live in New Monterey. Mm -hmm. So I'm a proud member of New Monterey, the secret number one neighborhood of the city of Monterey. <laughs> agreed, 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 agreed. Um, I wanted to talk to you um, uh, about a few items and then of course uh, it's fire away and ask questions from, from you. Um, the big topic um, mm -hmm. of today is, is the fiscal emergency. Mm -hmm. We have uh, presented our case uh, over the past uh, two years to the city council uh, in a series of eight or nine different meetings where we uh, basically spoke also about the cliff that we are approaching with respect to the city finances. And uh, the, uh, the city council in late September, early October last year um, finally got the message to a degree that they understood that um, coming this fiscal year, 2021, uh, there, has to be, uh, there have to be made changes. There have to be made drastic cuts or something else needs to, needs to happen. And the council at that time um, discussed a, f uh, a few measures that they, they wanted to implement. Uh, one of them was uh, reductions of services, reduction of, of personnel, uh, operational um, reductions in, in various areas. The other one was uh, increasing revenues. Uh, um, and one of them, uh, two options were discussed at that time, raise the TOT and or raise the sales tax. And you, you are aware that at the end, the council decided that they want to go with a sales tax increase of 0.5% or half a cent for every dollar spent. And um, the council didn't, um, did not dodge the question 
question whether it should be TOT or sales tax. What the council was, was contemplating in the end was where do we think is this, what is the smartest way of going forward for right now? And uh, they looked at the sales tax and they looked at the overall um, benefits for the city of Monterey and they landed on the sales tax because they felt this is right now the most fair revenue enhancement that we can do for the city of Monterey because the sales tax benefits all those that pay into the sales tax. The TOT is carried by the tourist and the TOT is frankly a very convenient target to raise because it is basically saying let the other ones pay for the services that we receive in the library for instance because the tourist dollars are funding also services like the library. But the sales tax on the other hand was, was an argument for the council that they considered and actually in the end acknowledged is, is, a, is a tax that challenges, burdens every single one in this room but also our visitors, our tourists, our non-residents. And what, what helped the council to understand that logic was also the data that we were able to provide them with respect who generates the sales tax. And the sales tax is generated by all of us here in the room. And for every single one of us, half a cent to a dollar is what we have to possibly pay more. But it's also generated and paid for 62% of folks that are non-residents. So in, in this, this fairness argument that the council weighed at the end was an argument that <coughs> kind of got traction because it is a tax that affects everyone and it's still a tax that benefits the residents to, to a wider degree because again like I said the sales tax pays for a lot of the services that we are, uh, that we are providing, enjoying, asking for on a day-to-day -day basis. The TOT is, is at 10 percent and the TOT is not just the only surcharge right now that the hotels are paying. And part of that was also for the council when they weighed this argument to acknowledge that the transient occupancy tax is 10%, but then in addition to that, the hotels are charging additional percentages to pay for the city's conference center facility. So about five years ago, uh, the hotels decided to tax themselves to pay for the $50 million bond that is financing the conference center. And so large service hotels, these are the hotels that are adjacent to the conference center, charge a TOT charge plus another 4.1% in, in hotel tax to pay back directly for the conference center bond. The, the other full service hotels that are further away from the conference center charge an additional 2.1% I believe. And then all the small hotels, motels on Munras and North Fremont, uh, some of them also in the Canary Row area, they charge 0.9% for the conference center. So the, the council was weighing all the different options they said, okay, TOT is where we actually are, is TOT plus conference center facility district fees. Sales tax is where we are right now at 8.75%. We want to land on 9.25%. So that's where the, where the sales tax came. So if you, hear, if you hear discussions, something was dropped, why did they never look at TOT? Yes, the council looked at it. And the council weighed various arguments and at the end they decided we want to go with the sales tax. And again, as, as a staff, for us, we are executing what the council tells us to do. We gave the council options for TOT, for sales tax, but in the end I think the, 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 the suggestion to uh, go forward with Measure G uh, came out of this kind of calculations and thinking and thoughts and feedback we received from various groups, businesses, stakeholders, etc., etc. So, uh, hang on, I need to my my. <laughs>
phone is buzzing next to the microphone, so that's not good. So, um, is that your phone or your pacemaker? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet, Bill. I'm not yet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the other part that you, you should be aware of, the sales tax. While the sales tax is, is right now 8.75%, 6% of that sales tax goes to the state of California. <coughs> Um, a quarter percent of the sales tax goes to the county of Monterey, <coughs> one percent of the sales tax goes to the city of Monterey, and an additional one percent goes to the city of Monterey <coughs> through Measure S to keep our streets and sidewalks and storm drains up, updated and upgraded. And another set of two smaller tax measures goes to MST and to TAMSI. That all adds up to the current sales tax of 8.75%. So keep in mind, again, of the 8.75%, 6%, no question asked, goes to the state. A quarter goes to the county. Another quarter goes to MST and TAMSI for Measure X. And the remaining taxes goes 1% just into Measure S, and we cannot spend it on anything else than streets. And the other 1% is going into the city coffers. So at the end, if Measure G uh, will be approved or not approved, uh, we will land on 9.25%, which is the highest sales tax a city can charge by, by the state regulations. And when you go around our neighborhoods and you go, dare I say, shopping in at Home Depot, you are paying 9.25% already. A lot of cities have 9.25%. What you also need to understand, uh, and that was an argument that the council also considered uh, because it was made by the public, was the remaining 0.5% from 8.75 to 9.25%. The remaining 0.5% can be grabbed from any public agencies <coughs> in the county of Monterey. So you could foreseeably have a tax measure coming from the county which says we want to increase sales tax by 0.5% for county purposes as well. So in this case, again, the, the measure G um, would, was placed on the ballot because frankly the council realized if we don't have it on the ballot in March and don't give the voters a, a chance to say yay or nay, then in, after March 4th we have to sit down and cut $2.8 million out of the city budget because that's the deficit we are projecting for 2021. So the council realized that, as I stated earlier in October, went through a whole uh, public outreach process. We <coughs> met with over 18 groups, I believe, uh, from individual residents to the Taxpayers Association twice and others. And um, council put it on the ballot, and I believe at the end of December, or early January, uh, the Monterey uh, Peninsula Taxpayers Association came actually out in support of that measure because they understood what we wanted to do. And here's what we want to do should the tax measure gets approved. We called it the hybrid solution. And why we call it the hybrid is the additional sales tax measure can only help us for a certain amount of time. It's not the the the, the one solution. On the other hand, on the other side, we have to reduce our <coughs> operational cost. So hybrid means for us, we will have a revenue enhancement. In this case, it will be the sales tax. And on the other hand, we have started working off reducing already our operational cost on various levels. And uh, that will continue. And that will be an obligation of staff that we will continue working very, very closely with anyone in our community as well as with our employee groups to drive down our operational cost. And one of the indices you can see right now is that we started negotiating labor negotiations with our groups last year in, in March, April. And our three largest groups, we still have not come to labor agreements because we are sitting at the table and we are negotiating really 
in a, in a way that is relatively new for the city of Monterey because we cannot sustain certain costs anymore that we are having with our employees, employee benefit packages, etc. So you need to understand that that's a good indices for you that we are already on this path of finding ways of re eliminating costs by not reducing service levels. So we will see where we land there. Um, I'm hopeful that we may have agreements in the next two to three months with our labor groups, but um, that that is part of this hybrid model that we need to look at ways doing business more cost efficient. So that's, that's the measure G explanation and, and thank you for not asking uh, any questions about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions about the measure G? I had nothing to do with the whole tax situation. I, I don't have a position. But I thought you did a great job of explaining that, yeah. number one. Number two, I'm really impressed that the city council worked through all that and, and could look <coughs> at things from a fair perspective, which is rare these days. And I just want to compliment you and the council on yes. the work so far. Thank you very much. So I've lived here a long time, but I haven't paid that much attention to city affairs, so maybe I'm mistaken, but I always thought that the city of Monterey was doing pretty well and didn't have that many um, financial, you know, serious financial challenges. So what's changed? Um, so we have been very fiscally conservative uh, for, for many years. <coughs> Uh, having said that, we also entered labor agreements many, year, many, many years ago that we cannot just sustain anymore. In, in times where, where we had um, good, uh, rich revenues coming in, we, we entered into labor agreements uh, that, that we, at the present time, cannot continue to afford. Um, I, I give you an example. Uh, we we are we if you go on Transparent California and look at our salaries that are posted there publicly year after year after year, take a good look of the top 100 employees and you will see where our costs land, where we spend a lot of money. We spend a lot <coughs> of money in public safety over time. And that is, a, to a great chunk, and no disrespect to the fire chief, in the fire services, in fire department. That we, we are spending over two million, two and a half million dollars every year on overtime in the fire department. And we, and there are many good reasons why we do it, but we need to figure out a way how we, how can we reduce those costs. So some of those costs, we get reimbursed by the state of California because wildfires is the new normal. And we start rolling out to wildfires earlier and earlier and we stay until late December on, in wildfires. We sometimes have three strike teams out, 10 to 12 firefighters. Now, they are gone and we need to backfill because you guys, when you call 911, you don't want to hear, sorry, we are up in Santa Rosa today. <laughs> so those overtime costs get reimbursed by the state of California. And I think two years ago, we had the largest reimbursement for about $780,000, $900,000 higher. 1.1. 1. 1. 1. $1.1 million. But at that time, the overtime was also scratching three point something. So we, we have that element of state call outs. And we have, back to your question, something in our labor contracts that just allows to have more overtime cost. We need to change that. The other part is, and people always look at me and ask, is he dodging the question or not, is CalPERS cost. CalPERS is costing us more and more money every year. And that curve, while CalPERS is trying to give us good projections and CalPERS has created some sort of a system that have smoothened out those cost increases, those costs cost us a lot of money. And all the retirees that are sitting here in the audience and of CalPERS retirees, we are carrying those through. And there's a, there's a, there's a mix of, of challenges that, that <coughs> is facing us. One of them 
is life expectancy is going to get better and better. That's really cool for me and for us but not good for pensions, then I kind of thought people would fade away earlier. That costs money. The other part is uh, the investment strategy of CalPERS is different. They are not aggressively investing anymore. The state, we are still living in the state of California. We have a two-third majority of very intelligent people saying we want to invest in more sustainable investments. So you don't have investment strategies anymore that basically say, let's be a very much aggressive and get the highest return on investments. You also have now cons social conscious decisions making in the investment strategy of CalPERS. So CalPERS needs to hit 7% each year. This year they hit 6.1%, I believe. The previous year they hit 6.9%. Now, if you have any idea how the stock market is trending, you will see that there is a little different that. Now, you need to defend CalPERS also because you don't want them to become everything on Black 17 and, and, and let's have a return on investment there. But our CalPERS system is, 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 is one of those challenges. Our pension cost is one of those challenges that we have to figure out. We are now paying the piper for decisions made by previous administrations and city councils 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Good news is City of Monterey employees contributing more than they should to pensions, so it comes more out of our own paychecks. And also four or five years ago, uh, Lauren, when was Pepron? 2012. 2012, eight years ago. Um, a new pension system was implemented under the leadership of uh, Governor Jerry Brown at that time. And we have a great deal of PEPRA empo employees, uh, that's how we call them. And the PEPRA employees uh, retire later and pay all the pension costs. And with that, we have now a, a slight switch. And you can see that employees that we hired starting in 2013 are less expensive for us with respect to, to CalPERS. But uh, the other part is also that our standard revenue sources are not increasing as we as we felt. TOT is very good, but it's very seasonal. But sales tax is flat. Everyone shops prime Amazon. And uh, everyone goes to Costco. Uh, sales tax is flat. Sales tax is, is basically in the city of Monterey around 8.8 .8 to $9 million for the last five, eight years. Mm -hmm. And there's no real increase. Whereas other costs are increasing. Our costs for insurance are going up. Our costs <coughs> for contractors are going up. Anyone trying to find a contractor lately to, to build a stupid fence or something like that? You, you fall on your behind if you see what they are charging right now. And we don't have a lot of choices here that we have to repair sidewalks. We have to do a lot of things. So it's, it's, it's a mix of, of many things, um, but it requires also a mix of many things to fix it, hybrid approach. And, uh, and, there are, and I invite you to, to ask more questions or also get into a one-on-one -on -one if you like, or invite us to neighborhood meetings. Because we have done a lot of things already to address those issues. And, and Lauren is, is at the forefront and the center of many of those things that we are implementing. We need to rethink, we need to retool. And that's, that's continuing going forward after Measure G. No matter what comes out of Measure G, we are ready to roll and go forward. Thank you. Yes, Bill, and then Bob. Um, the city has a very large budget for a population of under 30,000 people. I think it's unfair to just divide the budget by the per capita because Monterey is a complex city. <clears throat> On the other hand, we have over 5,000 hotel rooms, over 30,000 restaurant seats, a regional shopping center, tremendous land holdings that pay lease like the Trader Joe's site and Fisherman's Wharf. So I think it's hard to say that it's a revenue problem. I think more of that is a spending problem. I sat in on a group, the last time the city went in on a tax increase, they set up a group of business people 
Uh, there were about 20 or 30 of them, and we were allowed to sit in and just listen to them. They came up with a list of concrete suggestions. I think Sam Elliott with the SUNYO, and, and I just wonder how many of those were implemented. They dealt detailed with the budget, the finance <coughs> person brought in a lot of good data, and they made a list of concrete so that we wouldn't have this, we need more revenue, we need more revenue every three or four yeah. or five years. So I, I guess my question is, how many of those were implemented and shouldn't you have been looking at operational costs before we got into an emer a fiscal crisis? I mean, the city, yes. you know, you have smart people there, yeah. Hans. Why weren't you looking at this issue two, three, four years ago? And, and Bill, uh, great question. And you may recall many of the things that we implemented when you were still community development director for the city of Monterey. Uh, we combined departments, planning uh, and public works went together. Uh, in order to streamline. Uh, we, we, you know, you remember a lot of the things that were even done under your watch when we tried to reduce cost. And I, I tried to explain that this is <coughs> it's not just we haven't done anything, but it's a lot of things that are catching up time after time. One of the ideas that the Blue Ribbon Committee threw out in those years was privatize the library. Well. We have looked at it and decided maybe not such a good idea. Uh, one of the ideas was sell your properties, you remember that. And we, we made the decision at that time, we will not have fire sales of our properties just because we need money, because it makes sense to keep those income sources going on and on. You may recall the Tideland Fund was in the, uh, in the general fund for many years while you were here and working with us, we had to switch them out of the Tideland funds four or five years ago because the accounting was not correct. The Tideland funds had to stay in the Tidelands and couldn't go the revenues for all those leases directly into the general fund. So a lot of things have happened and continue to happen. And the input that we receive during the stakeholder meetings were very, very important for us to just, again, check. Have we looked at that? <coughs> Did we look at it? There's no silver bullet out there that anyone outside or inside has right now that we haven't touched. And there's no option out there that we will not look at if it makes sense. And so, like I said, um, it is an iterative process. And we have done a lot of things uh, over the past years. We shrunk the organization. Uh, I believe when when we started, we had 550, 600 employees. We are now down to 490 approved positions. Actually, we are filled at 430 right now. So we, are, we, we have less people working in streets. We have less people working in, in, in parks. We don't have tree crews anymore. So we are trying to do just that, what you're saying, listening and finding basically a, an appropriate balance of what, what, what are we capable of doing and what is um, what don't we have to do anymore. Uh, our former city manager always said, the city residents do not care what badge is on the uniform if someone helps them. They just care that somebody helps them. <coughs> and we, we are working in those principles, continue working on those principles as well. So um, yes, we, we, we need to continue looking at those, Bill, you're absolutely right. And, and I think we have a good track record of not ignoring those good suggestions. It's always for me astounding that um, uh, committees or, or other CFOs come to us with the idea of, okay, they just don't understand their numbers and let me help them quickly. And then after two, three, four months, they report back and they say, you know, we had no idea how complex it is. We had no idea what you are all doing with that. So yes, we have reduced our operational cost because revenues are coming in, you're right, but it just doesn't help us right now. So that's the best, I might, maybe, it might be a poor explanation, but that, that's where we are right now. Bob? Yeah, first I wanna thank you very much for using the uh, hybrid analogy, I think that uh, uh, clarifies the situation and uh, makes people realize 
how broadly you're looking for a solution to uh, what you call the crisis. Um, so I wanted to clarify something that you said and then ask a question um, <clears throat> because uh, I'm a co-signer on the ballot measure promoting passage of the sales tax measure. And so as soon as people see my name there, if they figure out it as I, they may ask me a question. So I want to give the right answer. Uh, the clarification part is, <clears throat> you were saying that of the um, 8.75 sales tax that we have now, you said 6% of it, well it's actually not 6% of the 8.75, it's because that would be some little tiny amount. It's actually three quarters of it, six over eight if you do your algebra. It's three quarters almost of the sales tax that we collect goes to the state, 6% of the eight. So you take away six and you only got two point something percent left for the city and the county and so forth. So uh, it's really not 6% of 8%, it's three quarters of the 8% that we have to give up and it doesn't stay here in Monterey. Um, <coughs> question I'm asking is, you know, a lot has been said and you've described the need for a hybrid approach and some changes both in spending and in uh, revenue collection. Um, people are going to say, hey, well, we bring in all this extra money. What are the city's priorities? What are they going to spend it on? If you don't know what is first, second, third, fourth place in the needs for which the extra money will be spent, um, how will that process play out and uh, what will the, if it passes, why should I vote for it? What's going to be on the to-do list? Thanks. Thank you. So I, city councils can change their priorities in a heartbeat. <coughs> um, uh, that's their right as elected officials. Um, but the priorities that the council uh, has identified <coughs> over the past years uh, is very clearly we want to keep public safety on the forefront. Uh, we want to keep police and fire where we are with respect to staffing and uh, fire stations. We want to create housing solutions and help uh, build housing. We want to preserve the character of our, our neighborhoods and the character of our town. I want to ensure that this is a, is, is a town that, that cares about each other and um, uh, despite all the influences that are coming to us from various groups and, and, and from the state of California, uh, neighborhood preservation, uh, having a quaint city, we discussed yesterday with the council, um, is, is part of their priority. So status quo uh, is important for the council. Uh, preserving our natural, natural resources is very important. And with the tax measure, it became clear that they also don't want to reduce services. They are interested in keeping our existing service levels pretty much alive, which includes having a library open seven days a week, which includes full staffing again in public safety all across the board, which includes also that our employees are responsive to the needs of, of our residents. So. Um, in, 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 uh, in summary, what, what the council and what the council's priorities are is ba are based on what we have established, preservation of, of that quality of life, working on housing solutions that fit into our neighborhoods and our town, in our old town or downtown area, and providing service levels for all of our residents. Say again? There, in the meeting, every time they've met the council, it's identified their number one priority is fiscal responsibility. So, yes. <laughs> so, in, in line with the tax. Yes. So, so, um, <coughs> Gaudens, thank you for, for saying it. I, I got carried away with the measure G already, but the point is, um, <laughs> fiscal stability is important for them, and and uh, you pointed that out. That that's a that's a trademark. Uh, what you need to understand is. Uh, we as staff have already dialed back and we have dialed back to the extent that last fiscal year we ended up with about two million dollars in savings and we ended up in two million dollars in savings because we left a great deal of positions not filled. 
those two million dollars will go into the savings account okay. for the city of Monterey. It's, it will not be used to fix our budget deficits because we cannot rely on savings year after year. What, what our budget also assumes is a growth in TOT and a growth in property tax. TOT for the first six months, we, had, we want it to be up overall for the whole year at, for 4%. For the first six months, we are up 0.2%. So uh, we, we are monitoring all the numbers also. We have a pretty good system in place to, to see what, what's going differently. What is interesting, by the way, uh, again, mornings with the city manager, you hear more than, than maybe you want to hear, but the TOT drop is in the hotels on Munras and North Fremont. The other hotels have actually moderate increases in TOT. Canary Row, downtown increases. Munras and North Fremont have drops at around 9%, minus 9%. What does it tell us? We're working very much with the MCCPB, and Jennifer keeps her head down right now. She's not even looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> She's taking off. But what had happened is that Munros and North Fremont, in my opinion, have priced them out of the market. Mm. People are not willing to pay $250 for a motel room on Munros. Mm -hmm. And the product that other communities are offering for $150 to $180 a night is different than our drive-in motels we still have. If you can go to the Marriott Inn and Suites in Marina and stay there a night for $150 and get in and out of Monterey in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that's an attractive product for some consumers. So again, our, our fiscal stability is very important. We are monitoring all the numbers that we have and uh, property tax will come in higher at uh, two and a half to three percent so that we all suffer. Our homes are getting more worth every day, but we cannot sell it because we can't buy a new one. But the point is um, fiscal stability, Measure G, hybrid approach, they all have to see as, 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 as one uh, big uh, uh, operations that, that we are pursuing over the next months and years. Zoe? So I just want to drill down a little bit more on this. The chief said fiscal responsibility and you said fiscal stability and those are two different words. No. So, so, yeah. so I just, I want to get into the syntax of it because mm -hmm. it's different. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not trying to mince words or anything, but fiscal responsibility is different than fiscal stability. Yeah. And um, I think it's important to, to know the differences, yeah. especially coming from a fiscal So. If the council wants to be fiscally okay. responsible, that's different than wanting to be fiscally stable. Yeah. And so can you explain, or is there, is, is, is there the difference? The, the, the council wants to be fiscally responsible or they want to be fiscally stable? Fiscal stability and fiscal accountability is part of what the council wants to do. I don't see it as a big difference uh, because I, I feel uh, if you put fiscal stability, fiscal responsibility onto your mission statement or onto your guided, guided principles, you know that you want to implement services only if you can afford them. Okay. So I, 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 I get your notion and it, uh, I want to talk about seven more minutes about other topics okay. because <laughs> if that's okay with you. Uh, um, we could go on and on. And yes, <laughs> and, and, and again, uh, I have a lot of business cards in my pocket and I'm, I'm happy to, to hand out the one or the other. I have to. Uh, what you saw on Tuesday night, we had in front of the council an appeal for a cannabis lab. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you might have wondered what's going on there. Uh, Terry, Terry is here from the Planning Commission. And the Planning Commission approved a, a lab uh, that uh, went to ask for a permit of testing cannabis products. And that that's, that's the, that was the purpose of the request. The Planning Commission uh, uh, approved that request and the city manager appealed the decision of the Planning Commission. And as a city manager, you should really fight with the Planning Commission or you should really <coughs> attack a decision of the Planning Commission. And that's not my style. Why we felt we needed to bring it back to council was that the council still 
or the, the city of Monterey has a marijuana ordinance in place that we put into uh, writing in 2011, <coughs> 2012, that prohibits any type of operation related to cannabis products in the city of Monterey. And those of you who know the subject know that we sell CDBG containing products on Lighthouse Avenue, but we are not selling cannabis on Lighthouse Avenue. And if you want to get a recreational drug, you go to Delray Oaks, you go to Seaside, you go to the in unincorporated area of Carmel, and you have shops there. We still have this ordinance in place, and we felt as staff that the Planning Commission might have made an error in allowing cannabis because our community gave us the ordinance in 2011, 2012 and said, we are not interested right now to have dispensaries in town. And with that also we say, everything in that kind of circle of cannabis operations we don't want. Tuesday night we brought it to the council, which is the board that then says yay, yay or nay. And the council said, okay, we deny your appeal city manager but we also tell you, city manager, come back to us and clarify our ordinance with respect to lab testing. So now what we achieved through this process, which was actually a very non-controversial process, what we achieved with that is council task us now to clarify that part of the ordinance and we will bring this back to the council and say, here's the lab testing. That will open the door also for the council and the public to say, Maybe we should not just limit it to lab testing. Maybe we should also allow dispensaries. So that will trigger a new chain of discussions that we have to have. We felt as staff uh, that it was worthwhile to bring this appeal to the council because again, 2011, the elected officials, the communities weighed in and said, we don't want any cannabis operation in the city of Monterey. Since then, state law has overtaken certain things and it's time to calibrate again. So this will happen over the next two, three, four months and maybe you want to keep attention to that. Um, I want to talk about two more things. Um, Gary? Yeah, just a, a quick comment, Hans, on, on the cannabis issue because I, I was at the city council meeting, not specifically for that. I was there for the affordable housing issue, but it was next on the agenda. I thought that the individual that's going to be operating this lab made a terrific presentation. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a tremendous amount of investment on his part for this facility. It's going to employ 30 high paying jobs for the city of Monterey. There is no cannabis that will be sold from that facility. The amounts of cannabis that go into this testing are minuscule, and when they're done being tested, they're useless, they're powder. They have heavy security picking up these samples, they have heavy security delivering these samples, and it is very, very well thought out. There's no chance of any use of cannabis or sale of cannabis out of that facility. I thought it was very well done. I thought the council ultimately made the correct decision. Yeah. And I didn't lose sleep over that either. So, so it's, uh, it's right. so Hans. Terry, yes. So I was also very impressed with the council's discussion and decision. It was, you know, they, uh, yeah, it took them too long, but, but they, you know, they really did get into it. And yeah. I thought, uh, uh, you know, um, denying the appeal and asking staff to yep. fix the ordinance was their correct decision. So yes. they did a good job. Yes. It was good. And, and, and that's something we all can take away uh, today as well, is those kind of discussions, uh, they are not necessarily controversial. They are just helping to build a community. And uh, one of the rules that I learned early, early on in my career with the city of Monterey is that the council always makes wise decisions. And even if, you, if I don't understand them, and even if I disagree as a staffer, in 99% of, of, of those decisions, and I think Bill will support me on this one as well, 
um, the council is right. The council has their ears on the ground for most of the time. They know what's going on in the community through interactions with every single one of you. And they also know what is probably in the best interest for the community. So one of the things that I teach our or share with our staff always is it's okay if we have a different solution in mind, but council is always right. And then we next day we go back to work and we implement what council has told us to do. The other, ta the other thing I wanted to talk briefly about is affordable housing sites. On Tuesday night, we brought back to the council for decision making, and it was the third time that we presented it to council, four sites that, the, that we have identified as properties that are owned by the city of Monterey, but where we envision to have housing, affordable housing sites. One of those sites is on uh, East Franklin Street, where we currently have our Harbor Corporation Yard. We, we propose to the council to build affordable housing there, to move our Harbor maintenance staff to a place we really don't know where we sent them yet, but to move them out and give up that piece of property for housing. We have next door a property owner who is interested to partner with us and combine both lots and build an apartment structure in Old Town in that section. The other area we suggested were two parking lots to the left of the tennis center, uh, which are right now parking lots owned and operated by the city of Monterey, and we said, how about put housing there? The third site we proposed was the Cali P. Prin Principal, Cali Principal parking garage. Put on top of the parking garage, not on the second floor, but on top of the first floor that is actually on Cali Principal, an apartment building with up to 50, 60 apartments. And the fourth site we proposed is are the abandoned buildings up here on Madison Street and Van Buren that are owned by the city of Monterey and were former offices of the city of Monterey and are just right now storage units for our files and other things. And the council <coughs> told us to go full blast with all four sites because in the next round of analysis for us, some of those sites may actually fall off. And we are going, we are planning on going to the developers, to the development community, and say, here are the sites. We want to enter into agreements with you. What is the best deal we can get if we give you the land, if you even give you the water meters, and we give you a little bit of the water we have, what are you offering us? What can you build? And we want to get 100% affordable housing units there. The second step that the council authorized us to do, and that is equally important, is go to the water management district and also ask them for that water. The water management district is discussing right now that they have additional water. You may, re if you follow the discussions on, in the newspaper, there are water credits that the water management district is claiming to get back right now. We want to be the first in line to get those water credits for the city of Monterey. And that's that's the, the hour that I fill. If you have any more questions, please um, ask them. I, I think I have time for one or two more questions. Yes, sir. Real quick question. Um, so uh, contracts and purchasing yeah. within the city of Monterey, yes. how is that handled? Is there a director of contracts? And purchasing, I mean, not even be using the right terms yes. that you would use here, but it's what the county is these contracts and purchasing director over there. <coughs> yes. Mike Deer of the county. Yes. Do we have something like that? Yes, and, and she sits directly in front of okay, you. Okay, so the finance. The, I wondered if it was the finance the, person now. Yeah. We, um, have a, we have a centralized purchasing system that gets has the checks and balances through the finance. Uh, system uh, finance director and we have very clear purchasing ordinances that requires us to have three bids for informal purchases with certain limits and then formal bids for anything beyond that, min uh, okay. that limit. It's a very formalized, very much audited um, uh, manual and procedure. Are the departments able to um, do, do their own purchasing? Yes, uh, they, they, they are doing that. Uh, always checked and balanced by two instances, the public, uh, the, the, the finance director and the city attorney, 
and I'm the last one who signs it, and all I do is I look what we are buying, and I look if I have two little boxes checked that the city attorney saw it and the, pub, uh, the finance director saw it. And I, if I see those two things, check marks there, I sign the contracts. Okay, um, one last um, a piece to that. So these people are out in the departments, Yes. and at least with the county of Monterey, we found we did a huge project related to this topic, a training project. Yes. What we found was every, everybody from the receptionist <laughs> ordering stuff to yes. a full-time contract and purchasing person in the yeah. hospital, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. So, um, what? How are those people trained? I remember the like the receptions; they were scared to death they were going to make a mistake yeah. and stuff like that. So they were always calling <laughs> the head of contracts and person, "Can I buy this?" You know. Yes. Uh, so they create. We created an academy for them. Yes. I want to know what kind of training. So, so it goes on for those people. Yeah, it's always good to be scared because that shows that somebody is watching over you and, and if you get caught, you better don't make a mistake. So I think that's that's not a bad thing. Little, little bit, but yeah. the folks that are uh, purchasing and are allowed to purchase have to go through a, a, a training with us and get authorized by the finance department to make those purchases. Okay. One last question. Yes, Hans, uh, when the uh, housing was talked about and now it's passed, <coughs> I've never uh, really understood where, th there's not enough allowance for enough cars to be parked. Yes. So I don't understand that. Um, parking, parking, res parking restrictions or parking requirements are the new frontier for the state of California. They are telling local governments, don't try to restrict housing by forcing the developers, the housing builders to have ho parking on site. And what we see right now is, is that state legislation says, you can build housing in areas uh, where if it's next to a transit center, Maybe we even lift parking restrictions. You can park on the street somehow, somewhere. So as a city, uh, we are trying to figure out what is healthy for us, what is not, but we have to comply with state laws. And a lot of state laws are saying, your parking restriction is artificially uh, uh, preventing additional housing. So you city do not have any rights to listen to the neighbors who say we don't want our streets clogged and let them park on, on their own property. And that's, again, by voters' approval, is the majority that we have all elected in Sacramento telling us right now how to do our business in our local governments. And we have to maneuver and have to figure out a way that preserves our neighborhood, but also is state compliant. And some of those things, I'm very sure, some neighbors will not like. So thank you so much for everything and uh, the room is open.